What's up, YouTube? It's me, TJ DeVries, here to teach you a little bit more about NeoVim, show you a few tricks about how you can automate different things in your workflow, and hopefully give you some ideas of things that maybe you want to try to automate away a little annoyances in your workflow, or maybe just opens up new possibilities for things that you never thought you could make automatic. So with that, let's make this buffer right here, display the output of whatever Go file we have on the side of the screen. Let's get to it. So the first thing that we've got here is just any old Golang file that you have. You could imagine extending this for running go test instead of go run. But for now, we're just going to run this main file and we're only going to do this for go files. Where do we start? Well, the first thing that you need to be able to know is how do I set text within a buffer inside of NeoVim? So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a new file. We're just going to call this autosave.lua. Inside of this file, we're going to start doing some things to basically be able to modify buffers and we'll incrementally build our way from no Lua file to automatically run this Go code every time we save. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up a split and we're gonna find out what buffer is in this window. If I do echo nvim get current buff, that'll tell us the current buff number, which it turns out is 18. You'll see the result down here. So if we say local buff number is 18, and we want to do something like set some contents in that buffer. The primary way to do this is with the NeoVim API nvim buff set lines. So vim.api.nvim buff set lines. The first argument is the buffer number, which all of the buff APIs take. Following that is the start line and then the end line. You can use negative one and sort of like a Python style indexing to say basically everything from the beginning to the last line. You can usually put false in this spot. It's a bit technical. We don't have to go into it today. And then you just pass a list of lines that you would like to put into this range. So we'll say hello and we'll say world. And if we do both of these and then we run this file. So for me, I have a shortcut that does this leader leader X to sort of save and execute this file. But you could just do this by running source percent. When we do that, you'll see hello world pops up in the top. So that's the very first step, being able to set text in the buffer. Now that we're able to set text in the buffer, the next sort of thing that we need to be able to do is say, how do we react to events basically with inside of NeoVim, right? And this concept of events is auto commands inside of NeoVim. If you don't know a lot about them, you can read about help auto commands. There's a lot of information here, but if you read through top to bottom, maybe it'll take five or 10 minutes, you'll understand a lot better how to hook into various different life cycles or events or whatever you're familiar with in sort of the terminology of the languages or frameworks that you work in. NeoVim's words for that are auto commands. The auto command that we're concerned with is actually called buff write post. If you weren't sure how to find that by yourself, you could do something like use telescope help tags and search for something like buff write, and you'll see that there's a few different events here. So if you needed to do pre command or buff write, you might not know what those are, but you can press enter on that from inside of telescope and come to here. Buff write post executes, as it says in the help, after writing the whole buffer to a file, which is important when you would like to compile that file and then execute it. So this is saying, okay, we will only fire this event after buffers have been saved. Armed with our recently acquired knowledge, we're able to create an auto command that will listen to buff write post and then execute some code when that's happening. In the first version of this, we'll do it very simply and we'll extend to actually calling the Go code next. So what do we need to do here? We have nvim create auto command. This will create a new auto command that listens to a particular event. The first argument for this is the event name. And so in this case for us, that would be buff write post. And then it takes a list of options. You can read about this as always in the help and then create auto command. The thing that we're concerned with here is using the callback method. And so if we allow ourselves to take a function here and get this callback sent, this callback will be called anytime we write a file. Now this might not actually be what we end up wanting to do. We're going to maybe need to specify this only for certain files or patterns but this will allow us to run this whenever we write a file. And we're gonna do one other little trick that we don't have time to cover today in this tutorial, but we're going to make this part of a group. And what effectively this does is just make sure that we don't keep adding more event listeners, right? Event listeners, auto commands for each time we save this file. Instead, we're going to clear all the existing ones here. And so you can use nvim create our group to do this. And we'll just call this TJ's cool tutorial uh, because that seems like what we are doing right now. 
And you can just copy this. You can read about this in the docs for more information about what that does exactly. But just ultimately the end point is that we're not going to continually add these each time we do one. I've talked about this in some previous videos. So in this case, we can say print and we could just say like, wow, we saved a file. Nice. So we do this, we execute this file again. And next time we save a file, we're going to see this message. Wow, we saved a file. Unfortunately for us, this actually runs for every single file we save. So when we save this Lua file, it runs. And if we save our Go file, it runs. That's not actually what we want, right? What we want to do is only for this main.go file, do we want to execute our auto command. So let's go back to here and let's specify a pattern. Patterns are a way that you can tell NeoVim, hey, I want to do things only that match this particular file pattern or for different types of events, perhaps different patterns. But in this case, it'll be a file pattern. So we can just write something like main.go and if we save this, we'll see right now we saved a file, right? But if now what we do after we've executed this file again is we've saved, notice now we did not get our message that we wrote this. That's because this file doesn't match main.go. However, if we save main.go, you'll notice that now we do still see, wow, we saved a file. So pattern is the way that we can sort of disambiguate between different items, make sure we're only calling this in the right situation. Now that we can execute code only for our main.go, let's do something a little bit more interesting. If instead what we do is we take this function down here that sets buffs to a particular line, let's also, instead of just setting the entire buffer, let's do something like putting at the beginning of the file, right? So zero to zero sort of means in that zero spot, let's insert this code in between here. And we'll just delete the code that printed because we don't need that information anymore. So we save and execute this file and we go back to our main.go. When we write this file, what we should see is two more lines being inserted, hello world. And every time we do this, we're going to reset the entire file. I just moved up here quick so that you'd be able to see all the text down below. Don't mind me hiding out here in my not usual spot. Anyways, now that we know how to set the text and reactively call this when we write a file, let's figure out how we can run some external command, respond to that, and then apply accordingly the results into that buffer. So the first thing that I'll introduce you to is this concept vim.fn.jobstart. Now what job start does is it allows you to pass basically a list of things. In our case, we're gonna pass go run main.go. This could be whatever things that you need to execute to run your test. So it could be go test this directory or cargo build, obviously, or maybe, you know, you're cool and hippie. You're already using carbon at your work. I don't know. You know, so any one of those things, you just do that. You pass that in as the first argument. And the second one is going to be a list of things that sort of configure what we're going to do with the outputs of this result. So one thing that we need to do, is we need to set the standard out buffered equals true flag. This basically just means please only send me full lines. This lets us not have to worry about some additional complexities. You don't have to worry about it too much, but basically it just means send me the output one line at a time, which is great for us. And then we can say on standard out. So whenever we get some new standard out message, we can write something. We don't need this first function and then we'll take data here. And basically if we have data, cause it could be nil, then we're going to do the same idea that we've done before by setting the contents of the buffer. So vim.api.nvim buff set lines for the buff number. We're going to append these lines, right? So we're just going to do negative one to negative one, which just means at the very end of the file, put in these new lines, false, and then put in data. So now when we save and execute this file, we'll see that we get the results runs on save and it prints the current second when I save it again. It's later seconds. We can continue to do that. And if we were iterating on this and saying, you know, oh, uh, wow, great tutorial. You know, maybe you might even think about doing something like smashing the like button. Interesting, just, just a suggestion. So anyways, you can keep saving it and it'll keep running inside of here. The only other thing that we might wanna do is if we had something like this that causes us to break, we don't get the errors, which isn't an ideal situation. So we basically want to do the same idea that we had for on standard out, but instead of standard out, we're going to say error. And then this pass data will also be passed. And so now when we execute this file and we save it, it's going to say undefined ASDF. We don't know what that is, of course. So when we delete this again, we'll get that message back. Ultimately, this is about say 20 lines of code to automatically run this file. And you could even imagine doing something like creating your own helper function that runs these kinds of files. And you could 
add or turn them on or off with just a little bit of Lua and maybe some user commands. If you're interested in seeing something like that, you know, doing something like, oh, let's just do this with an easy command and it automatically attaches and then detaches from the file later. We could probably do that. You know, if we, if we see, let's say a thousand likes, you know, if we see a thousand likes on this video, I'll show you guys another. That's how I know that you're enjoying the content and that you want to do it. Anyways, I hope you like this. I hope this gives you a brief intro and sort of this general concept, right? Of like, I just script something for yourself that does the little thing that you want to do inside of NeoVim. That's part of making NeoVim your personalized development environment, the PDE, which hopefully I'll remember to put in the description down here or as a little thumbnail -y thing. I don't know. I'm uh, whatever. You know how it is. Anyways, thanks for hanging out and I hope you had fun. Leave a comment if you want to learn anything more. Thanks everybody. I'll see you later.